in this segment, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the cutout clutch. And here's the scenario in the field. You trip for metal, and then you try to make the thing run again, and you get, a, you get an error code for the feed roll speed sensor failed. Well, the feed roll speed sensor didn't really fail like that. It's just the feed rolls didn't turn, OK? The header will run, but the feed rolls won't. And of course, you can't always see that in the cab. Almost always, the issue is going to be the cutout clutch, and it's, it'll be stuck. And so the cutout clutch sits right in behind this shield here. I'm going to pull this off real quick. So we're looking at this cutout clutch right here. And the metal detector poles I will show you here in, a, in just a little bit. But what happens is this cutout clutch gets full of dirt and it sticks. And then it won't re-engage. It did what it was supposed to do, but it won't re-engage. And most always the problem is too much dirt and lack of lubrication. Okay, and I'll show you how to I'll show you how to get it to uh, re-engage. Okay, there's a grease circle on the side of that cutout clutch that nobody seems to know is there, and they don't grease it. There it is, right there. There's a grease circle right in here, covered full of dirt that gets neglected. John Deere says that's a 500 hour grease circ. But some people, and I, I think that's not enough, but the purpose of that grease zerk is to fill it full of grease so that the dirt doesn't pack in and it doesn't gum up. So the problem is it's all gummed up, so we gotta get it to work again. So the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with about 20 pumps of grease in there. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna flush out all the old grease and dirt accumulated in there that's got it stuck. Okay, on the outside cover here, there's kind of a tin cover here. And that should be loose and free like that, and sometimes even rattly. And that's okay. Okay, next is a cam ring in here. This is what actually the, the stop dogs tripped so that it disengaged. Okay, this cam ring needs to turn both directions and jump back to neutral. You can see this one's kind of stuck. It doesn't want to run back to neutral. I can barely turn it that way. And so this one's really hasn't been greased for a long time. But we've got to get that freed up. And so we're going to pump grease in here. We're going to spray this whole thing down with penetrating oil. And we're going to work that dog back and forth until, we, until it runs free. And as soon as we let loose of it, it'll just snap back to neutral. Another thing. Some people get a little discouraged because they try this and they call me back and it won't run. And, but if, if the feed rolls aren't running, the header is. Almost always is this the cutout clutch. But just stick with it, get it freed up, work it. Go back up in the cab, try it again, see if it goes. If it doesn't, come down here, pump some more grease in it, work it back and forth. All right, to continue on, we moved over to a different gearbox so that we could look at the, the stop dogs here. And so there's, there's really two sets of stop dogs. There's a set of dogs up here. And these are used when we do a knife sharpen or a shear bar function. And they lock it out so the feed rolls don't turn. So if your feed rolls are turning when you're knife sharpening, the problem is up here. Here's a solenoid that engages it. Okay, when the metal detector trips, that uses these sets of dogs down here. And it, these go into the clutch to disengage it and also stop the feed rolls immediately, okay? That's another thing that sometimes they get stuck in the clutch and so uh, you can't turn the ring because they're, they're just jammed in there tight. These arms need to move free like that uh, and, and return. There's two return springs down here at the bottom and sometimes what, those will fall off or get stretched out and those need to be in good shape too. So those dogs need to just easily go back and forth like that. And once again this is all covered in a hood on the machine and then uh, just packs full of dirt and, and just periodically needs to get clean. The later machines have grease zerks here too um, and that helps just to purge, keep the dirt out of, the, of that area. All right, another issue I have on this machine and, and it usually occurs first thing in the morning and especially maybe after a damp or a dewy uh, morning, uh, you'll get a SIG 507.11 code and it says high side driver failure and that's a little obscure uh, stop pole solenoid failure. Uh, but anyhow, here, here's what usually happens with this one. You'll see this solenoid, and we talked about the dogs that, that 
uh, trip the metal detector. This is a solenoid that drives those dogs, it, that fires when uh, you trip for metal. The machine does a self-test. The first time you hit the road field switch, you go into the field mode, it does a self-test. If it doesn't pass the test, it's going to give you a code. And it's not going to run until we get rid of that code. There's a connector that goes onto the side of this with the thumb screw. Take that connector apart, blow it out, push and pull it on and off these spades several times to clean the spades, put it on, give it a try again and see if it goes. If not, we might have to take the connector apart and, and actually look at the pins. Sometimes uh, the pins will corrode or so they won't make contact. But once we make contact with that, then we'll do a go back to the field mode, back to the road mode. It does its self-test again. If it passes it, you're good to go. The metal detector's armed then.